Hello, I'm Antonio Felix Acosta and uh, today we're going to focus and speak about the brakes of a DTM car. Um, so one of the first things we can see is the, the wheel cage. This area here is much bigger than, uh, than a normal uh, regular car on, on, the, on the streets that we see every day. Obviously we have very big tires, uh, high performance tires um, and uh, it's even hard to fit the tires here with the tire warmers that we use so it makes the jobs for the, for the mechanics in the pit stops even harder. Uh, and then if we focus on the brakes a little bit more, uh, carbon brakes, the same kind of brakes that it's used in Formula 1 and high level uh, Formula racing. So uh, it shows how high the, the level of, of uh, engineering is in, in DTM. Every driver is limited to three sets of discs uh, in, in one season. Uh, so we have to, to manage this very well because uh, three sets of discs is actually a low amount of, of, uh, of sets that we can use. For example, if we go to Norris Ring, which is a hard, uh, which is a track which is very, very hard on uh, braking performance, uh, one, one set of the discs is, is already gone. So then we, that leaves uh, most of the drivers only with two sets left for the rest of the season. Um, if we focus on the pads a little bit, also very good. Um, but the pads, we are not so much limited. So whenever we run into some braking problems, we can uh, we can put new pads and try and try and fix our problems. But um, I, I believe the brakes are one of the most impressive things of a DTM car, and uh, it's one of the things that I enjoy the most here is uh, is the brake, braking performance. Okay, so then if we come to the driver seats, driver position, um, one important thing that we have to play around in a fast lap, well, not only in a fast lap, but also during the race to help the, the performance and to help your the tire degradation is the brake bias. Uh, this rotary that we have here, if we want to bring the front percent, the, the braking percentage more to the rear, we turn it to the left. If we want to bring it forwards, we turn it to the right. Uh, normally, if you come to a very, uh, from a very high speed into a heavy braking, uh, with a straight uh, steering wheel, so for example, Zandvoort turn one, um, you try to bring the, the brake bias forwards as much as possible because the car has a downforce to take this brake peak and, and really put the energy on the front tires. Um, but then if you go maybe to a higher speed corner or a corner that you have to brake and also have some steering wheel inputs, then you try to move it rearwards a little bit to avoid some front locking and, and loss of performance, obviously. And then uh, one thing that you, you don't really know and, and it's hard to, to compare it to a, to a road car and to a DTM car is the braking performance on the feet, on the pedal. Um, normally you try to, when you come from high speed and the car is loaded with, with downforce, you can really press hard on the brake pedal um, and then you have to modulate the brake pedal and really come off the brakes as you're losing speed because you're also losing downforce so the car is not accepting anymore the high forces on the brake pedal. Uh, so this is something that young drivers take a lot of time to understand when they come from karting to Formula cars or even DTM cars. Um, and, and this is the same, you know, this is something you learn very young and then you carry throughout your, your career and it, it can really help you to be fast or slow uh, if you are good on the, on the brake pedal. <laughs> 